peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous, and in today's video, we're going to go over guided fill. So let's get to it. So we've went over a bunch of different fills, but one we haven't went over is guided fill. So Dad, what is guided fill? So guided fill is yet another fill pattern to create unique embroidery fill designs, and you get to define exactly how you want your embroidery fill pattern to look. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Should we show how to use it? Yeah, it's pretty simple to use. We'll show you how to do it. So we're in Inkscape, which we've shown how to download it, so you can go check out those videos. But for now, let's do this. Yeah, the first thing we'll show you is kind of the default fill pattern. And we'll just do kind of a simple circle here to show you what that looks like. Go to params. And you can see it starts with an underlay that goes vertically. And then the default goes into this horizontal pattern, which we show you how to manipulate this to get different types of fill designs. But today we're going to do something completely different. So we'll go ahead and cancel out of this. So what we're going to show you is how to create a guideline that your fill pattern will go off of in order to create a unique fill for your particular embroidery design. So all you really need to do is create the line that you want the fill to mimic, if that makes sense. So grab the Bezier tool. And if I just drew a simple line like this, and then I'm gonna click the node tool to bend it a little, a nice little bend there. And then if I just take this and go to extensions, ink stitch, edit, selection to guideline, what it does is it transforms the shape that we drew into a guideline that the fill can then mimic. Now this can overlap with this or it can be put off to the side, but everything needs to be grouped together in order for it to recognize that you want the fill to go off of this particular guideline. So once you have both items selected, oops, I'm in the wrong selector tool. So you have both things selected, you'll hit Control G for window or Command G for a Mac to group. Um, you could also get it from, I believe, object group. That's how you can get it. So once it's grouped, you can go to params again. And you can see this looks just like it was before, no changes. But if you go to fill method right here, and you can change that to guided fill, and now our fill goes off of that particular guideline. And you can see we have this nice curved fill. Pretty cool. Yeah, and we can adjust, obviously this isn't uh, centered, but uh, if I cancel out of this, and I'm gonna ungroup it real quick. And if I move this so that it's more centered on here versus off to the side like this, you can see the fill will follow it. So now it's there. And I'm going to regroup it, Command G, back into params, select guided fill again. And now you can see how it is now following it from a more centered look. And this would be really cool, like if you were embroidering the earth or a sphere, for example, like a basketball, uh, it would be really cool to kind of create this fill to, I don't know, make like it look like it's popping out like a 3D image. Um, I think that would really look neat rather than just a standard horizontal line, don't you think? Yeah. Now we'll do a quick uh, few more designs using this same, obviously it's just a simple circle, but we'll do a few different uh, guidelines just to kind of uh, show uh, what kind of different results you can get and then we'll embroider out on the machine. This might be a mess. I don't know if this is gonna work out, but there's another thing, another selection we can do here where instead of copy, we can do a parallel offset and we might get different results here. So this is kind of what I was looking for here. Again, depending on the complexity of your curve design, if you change the guided fill strategy section from copy, basically copying the exact same contour that you do to a parallel offset, which just, you can see here where it's just kind of uh, following the guideline rather than like making a copy of it all the way down. 
you'll get a different type of result. So that's actually gonna look really good. So I'm gonna hit apply and quit on that one. You wanna see what these look like in the simulator? Yeah. Yeah, these are certainly unique, uh, different types of fill that I think are gonna be pretty cool stitched out. Again, the whole idea about this is just to add another type of fill strategy to your embroidery arsenal that just ups your game. Let's see what this actually looks like. Okay, so it's done and we've got some pretty interesting results here. This curve, you can kind of see it here. I think if it was a bigger object, you would get a little bit more of that effect there. You can see it here, our little squiggly line on this one. Um, I think if I were to do this again, I'd probably turn the underpass off so you're not getting these vertical lines here and here. Very interesting results here. You can see that it follows that little straight V shape that we made and it actually makes a line here, which is very interesting. Um, it, the camera doesn't do it justice, but there's a lot of depth that this gives off because you're moving the thread at like a 90 degree angle here. So it's like there's two different colors here, even though it's the exact same thread. Uh, so if you were making something with a corner, uh, like a like a dice, it would look like it was following that and kind of giving you a lot of depth there, or even like a leaf. But you could set this up with a traditional uh, fill with two shapes and just change the offset of the fill stitch. So that's not as interesting. Certainly not as interesting as this one here. This is kind of my favorite. This shows all the little squiggling details. It almost looks like wood grain. So that could be really cool in using in your embroidery designs uh, to give a really different look. And I really like this one. Uh, it turned out really cool. That's kind of the results that we got out of doing some different types of guided lines. I think the results turned out really cool and you can definitely get very unique results because you're manually making how it stitches up. Yeah, you can absolutely decide how you want your fill stitch to go based off of whatever guideline you assign to that particular shape. Again, just another tool for your toolbox. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.